Right, here goes. Um, ad hoc install of the Atari composite mod in an Atari 2600 Junior. I picked up this mint condition, typical eBay 2600, as you can see. Factory fresh label, absolutely perfect. Um, so it makes a good candidate for this. Let's do a quick bit of uh, testing here. Number one thing to do with your Atari 2600 before you convert it to composite is check that it works. A lot of people seem to think that's um, a good idea to do it after they've done the mod. Of course, how do you know if the thing works in the first place if you don't quickly plug it in? So, I have already tried this, of course, but, you know, let's do a before and after. So here's my TV screen I use for most things. And there we go. Is that the best signal? Yeah, that's not the best channel, really. So there we go. Typical 2600 output in good old RF. Uh, yeah. You know, playable, but we can do better than that. Let's give this a go. So yeah, be aware of these things. That is a really stupid connector to use for power. You're shorting it out the moment you plug it in. But anyway, so cartridge out. What we've got to do is a few screws. There's probably a tin plate in there. Some of these you'll find on eBay and some of these already been inside and removed. The tin plate. Um, it's not essential that it's in there, but, you know. Personally, I always refit them. Five screws. Mm. Nice pens. Yeah, sorry about the dodgy focus. Couldn't be bothered to fix it, but we'll be alright. Right, okay. So if you're lucky, the case will just come off nicely. And there's a ribbon thing down on the inside edge. That thing, be careful. It just comes out. Right, do away with that for now. Right, so what we've got here is there's a bunch of tabs. Blah, blah, blah. They need a little bit of a tweak. Um, straighten them out so you can take the tin case off right you have to remove the bottom piece to get the top piece off um, when you buy the kit off the website oh yeah the kit off the website I'll show you the same we get a sheet with the common PCBs if your PCB is not listed go to the website use the contact form please the contact form and then you will get a response um, if you randomly email any of the service addresses of the website, the spam filter is going to attack them. So use the contact form. Um, right, so, yeah, what we're going to have to do then is, here's the kit. The kit is really simple. It's basically a wire, a PCB, a foam pad, um, and another wire. So what we're going to do is the lazy install which is perfectly effective and fine. It really is. Um, in fact, I'd recommend this way of installing these. It's quick. Um, right, so we have to isolate a few things. First thing we need to isolate is to cut these legs down here. Cut them nice and flush to the PCB. Okay. So that removes the 5 volts and the signal wire to the modulator. So that's effectively now removed. We also need to... Um, pop out some resistors down here and capacitor and the diode needs to come out normally we'd in the full guide we tell you to remove that fella there that would come out but you know you, you could just nip them out like this um, and that's what we're gonna do so what I'm doing here is just cutting one leg yeah because then that way if you think you've made a mistake you can soon put this back to how it was with no particular drama um, so yeah, this one needs to come out here, I'm just going to bend that out of the way, um, let's come in from the long trace down there, so that's that one there, I think, yeah, that's that one, but I need to cut you from the top side there, not the bottom, so that's you out, um, and there, I think, Apart from cutting the middle leg of the transistor, you can see here, 
you need to actually remove that pin to disconnect the circuit. That effectively isolates that fella as well. And uh, I think we're pretty well good to go. Right. So, there should be a PCB in here. Let's take the PCB, which is doing the work of making the composite video. Um, put his little foam pad on it. This does two jobs. It isolates the PCB and sticks it down. Use hot glue if you like, it's fine. Uh, okay, good idea to connect these now. Oops, only go in one way. No way. It's also a good idea to take this out now because the way the wire's going in, it needs to clear the corner. So if I plug that in there like that now. I can then place the PCB just right up, just inside where you can see silver lines here. And if you're going to put your tin hat back on, you're going to want to clear those silver lines as much as possible. And that basically means putting it in like that. Just tucked up right underneath that now isolated connector. And the wire will just sit up there, kinked, like that. Okay? That will go that way for now. We'll worry about this in a minute. Oh, look. It's still got electricity in it. It's just gone out. Right. Okay. So, the other thing to do, um, you really should cut the cable short. We've seen people where they're wondering why they've got video noise and they've done something like that over the top of these nice noisy chips here. So, um, just keep the wires short. Um, so this one we'll do is the actual composite pickup. Composite pickup goes down here. Can you see that? Yeah. There we are. Uh, uh, uh. So I'll we'll cut that nice and short like that. Nice and brave. This might not even work. Imagine that. This video might not make the internet. Alright. Just nip the end off. Hopefully my soldering iron's on. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> la, la, la. And the magic of television. Right, I'll go back to that wire in a minute as whilst the soldier iron heats up. Um, the audio pickup goes down there, like that. So I shall cut that off like that now. Um, the 5 volts you pick up off the bottom of the transistor here. That's the nice little place to grab it. Keeps the wires all tidy. Let's just do that in a sec. Because my funky soldering iron should be hot already. Yep. So let's get this composite wire on. Ugh. I really can't see without my specs. Right. Composite, composite, composite goes off the trace that comes down there. And remember, there are multiple versions of all of these boards. So unless your board looks identical to, to what this is, don't follow this guide. Check out the other images on the website. And if you're not sure, use the contact form. Um, obviously, it's quite a good idea if you're thinking of buying one of these, these kits just to uh, quickly pop the lid off the machine before you buy it. Because I'm reasonably sure that most people, if they can already use a soldering iron, can probably do this just by quickly watching this video and um, copying what I'm doing here. You on. Top tip, kids. Wear your glasses. Right. Okay. So that's disconnected. Transistor's disconnected. Let's move that wire there like that. That's disconnected. That resistor's disconnected. That resistor's disconnected. Now I just need to get some 5 volts from about there. Neat this is going to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing this by feel. I really am. So, if this does look terrible to you guys, I can't barely see it. <laughs> 
So. Right, and a bit of ground. Now that's probably ground, but you know what? I can't be bothered to risk it. So I'm just going to take ground to where it's obviously ground. Right to the edge of the board here. Could do it up there, but it's easier to do it there. Right. Okie dokie. Now obviously the tin hat won't fit so well, but it really doesn't need to fit that snugly, as long as it's there. Right. That's connected. So, hopefully, as long as I haven't actually just totally screwed this up, um, this is going to look a little bit different now. Now, obviously, what you do before you reassemble something you just messed around with, you check it, you see if it still works, you see if the magic smoke comes out. So, here's my tally. Uh, the difference is this time is we're going to go for some composite video using the composite video thing plug in the new cables like so and so we're going to need a cartridge ah of course we've got the uh keep your grubby little fingers out gate in there right um that's probably off where's the power wire on AV right here goes wish me luck okay on now if I short out a couple of pins down here this game should start and we see the real colours now does that or does that not look a lot damn better apart from me wibbling the wires hey now I think the average Joe can actually in install these as long as you've used the soldering iron before you know obviously don't sacrifice your childhood original console if you're scared you're gonna break it get a scabby one from eBay I mean look at that perfect right so finally let's jam this back in its box Okay, bit of a jump cut there, so we can do some close-ups. So, right, so now we know it works, what do we do? Well, we can either leave these components in, the ones that I disconnected, or um, to do a cleaner job of it, I'm going to cut them out. Um, and then I can give you a nice close-up of what's actually happened. So let's pop that out. Let's pop that out. And let's pop that out. I'll leave the transistor there for now. Right, so... See if we can do some close-up work here. So, audio goes in there. That resistor's been removed. There's a cap thing that's been removed there. And the resistor that's been removed there. And you can just see here that I've removed this pin here to disconnect the transistor. So I'm going to cut that out totally now. You know, remember, do not copy this guide. If your PCB doesn't look exactly the same as this, there are multiple variants. This one's really common, but, um, you know. So, yeah, there we are. That is basically the install. Five volts, composites coming out of there, audio's coming out over there. PCB's wedged in the gap here with the composite wire wedged in just behind the joystick. So when we put the tin hat back on, this should all be fine, basically. So let's whack the tin hat back on. Okay. Generally harder to get these things back on than take it off. Right, dodgy jump cap, uh, cut because my phone overheated. Roughly there. Just need to get that little pillar in the corner around that and then we can forget about that thing. Like so. These things need a bit of a rattle to see to lock the pieces back in. Screws. 
course it's traditional to lose at least one. Oh, he's found them all. Yeah, not the sort of thing you'd normally use a power driver on, but hey. That wire now can't pull because it's wrapped around that little post in there. No problem at all. You're fine with that. So yeah, hopefully that's it. We're done. Um, what do I need to do? Oh yeah, plug that in there. Put the power back in here. Check those switches are working. That's off. Power back in there. And the composite wires are already connected. Cartridge. And look at that. Composite mod done in some minutes and only one overheat on my phone. Not bad. You've got a Atari 2600 or similar and it's got lousy RF output. You might want to try out one of the composite mods we sell. Um, only a few wires to chuck in. Anything generally with a modulator, you can convert it. Um, check out futures8bit.com. Right, anyway, I'm going to play my game in peace. Goodbye. Now hand in your copybooks to your teacher or head of class.